Time is now 9.03, and uh, we will go ahead and get started. Ma'am, if you could do a roll call for me. Yes, um, Sheriff Mendoza. Chief Jimenez. Present. Chief Joy. Present. I, I see him on there. Uh, Chief Moya. Present. Chief Black. Present. Manager Schaefer. Manager Blair. And I see him as well. Uh, Member Wheeler. And he's on as well. Uh, Mr. Chair, you have a quorum. Okay, Chief Joy, can you hear us? Or can anybody, Manager Blair, Member Wheeler? I can hear you guys. Can you hear me? I don't think they can hear us. I can also hear you, but I don't know if I'm being heard either. Can you hear me? I can hear Member Wheeler. I can hear Chief Joy. All right, so it might just be you and I chatting. Hey, Chief, I'm here too. Can you hear me? I can hear. I don't know if everyone else can hear us that are there. This is. This is Dr. Rosen. I can hear you as well. Brian Moya, raise your hand. They can hear us. This is John Lawrence. I can hear. Papa, can you hear me? None of you are going to know that reference. That's okay. No Barbara fans? No, just me? Okay. Testing, testing, can you now? Any room test there? We we did hear you. It's a little fuzzy. So it's a little fuzzy. Can you hear it? Okay, you said it's a little fuzzy, but you can hear it. Testing, testing, can you hear us? But we can't hear them. Can you try talking, Manager Blair, into the mic? We'll see if it works. Sure. Can you all hear me now? He's coming through, but it's not coming through the speakers. Hang on. Okay. 
He can hear us, but he can't. He can't. He can't. He just talk to us. Okay. I hear the gentleman right at the microphone, and then the farther away you get, the harder it is. So we have. Do we have the possibility to close the mic? Okay. They they keep calling in or see if they can call in. Why don't we just leave you on speaker? You should be able to hear him now. All right, can you hear me now? Brian Moya is a very tall man. I'm coming through the board. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Okay, test it one more time. Is that me? Are you asking me to speak again? Now we can be perfect. Great. Chief Jones and uh, Mr. Wilson, could you guys try? You, you want to try roll call again? I guess let's try roll call again. We would have a form of manager Blair. Let's go ahead and try a roll call again, please. Okay, um, Sheriff Mendoza is absent. Chief Jimenez? Present. Chief Joy? Present. Thank you. Um, Chief Moya? Present. Chief Black? Present. Manager Schaefer? Manager Blair? Here. Thank you, Mr. Chair. You have a quorum. Thank you so much. All right, uh, the time is now 9:10, so we will get started. Sorry for the delay, everyone. Welcome to Edgewood for those of you that are here in person. Uh, thank you, Director Levine and the board of wanting and willing to be here in the Edgewood. Uh, glad to be here and have you guys here. So um, now I will um, entertain them. A motion to approve the agenda, unless anybody has any corrections or anything they want to change. I make a motion to approve the agenda as presented. Second. Okay, that was um, Chief Black and then second by Chief, uh, Manager Schaefer. If we could do a roll call, please. Chief Joy? Yes. Chief Black? Yes. Chief Moya? Manager Schaefer, yes. Manager Blair. Yep. Mr. Holland. I apologize, guys. Those mics are really not that sensitive, so please do talk directly to those. Yes, and again. Um, uh, Member Holland? Yes. Thank you. The motion has been approved. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Uh, next, we will. Move to the approval of meeting minutes. Request to approve meeting minutes for February 15th, 2024. And I will entertain a motion. I, I approve. Thank you, Chief Moya. Get a second. A second. Thank you, Chief Black. And uh, you need to take another roll call. Chief Jimenez. Chief Joy? Yes. Chief Black? Yes. Chief Moyan? Yeah. Manager Blen? Yes. Manager Schaefer? Yes. Am I going through? Yes. Cool. Thank you. The motion has been approved. Thank you, ma'am. And now we will move to um, item two. I'm, I'm sorry. Item three, informational and discussion items. Uh, we have an update on the status of the new Santa Fe RECC building. And we have Robert Lambert here uh, to give us a, a presentation. Thank you, Mr. Lambert, for being here. 
Uh, thank you, Chair, members of the Commission. Um, uh, there we go. So this is going to be kind of an attenuated presentation because we're near the finish line right now. So uh, you've seen this, I think, in various versions twice. But uh, actually, the new milestones in February, there was a lot of work done. You can see all of that. Um, it was more um, esoteric details um, that were all about the aesthetic of the building. Um, there were a couple of punch lists that we did, and we got our first electrical inspection in February. So that was finally done. Um, next slide, please, Roberta. And then in March, we got our fire marshal inspection, which was a, another big um, hurdle to cross. Um, all of the office furniture has been delivered except for the RECC uh, the dispatch chairs. They're coming soon. Um, we've got monitors being installed even as we speak right now, um, today. Um, they poured an accessible ramp to connect the two buildings. Um, so that was done, I think, on Monday, and I think it's able to walk on now so Roberto can have easy access <laughs> to go visit. Um, then we have our installation of security cameras. We're still trying to work out with the software system how to get it connected to the old public safety building and make sure it's all one system. And then we did our final punch last week. So um, that certificate of occupancy, the um, he was actually coming out today, so we will have certificate of occupancy, fingers crossed, this afternoon. So um, our next steps are to um, Sheriff Mendoza as having 13 of his staff move over into the RACC building into nine offices over there. And that's going to be for them to be able to get out of the space over in the public safety building for us to be able to start doing some construction renovation over there. Um, and then we're just waiting for the IT server move to happen that John will be talking about um, next. But that'll be happening, I believe, April 2nd and 3rd, and then they'll start testing and and doing kind of a hybrid version. So Roberto will be moving some of his staff over in April, I believe, and make sure everything works and is fully connected. Um, and then we'll be able to do the full move as soon as we can get the sheriff staff back into the RACC. So, and we're moving the secure files there. You can see that middle file room there, that middle um, image. That's where all the files are going to go from Roberto's office. That's happening on April 2nd as well. We have a secure um, moving company that's going to be moving, I think, four people who passed security for that. So in this image, the one on the left is from the dispatch room. Those are the shades. So the dispatchers can actually control their environment. It's a remote. There'll be one in the wall and one that'll be handheld. So they can um, change them, make them, it, they can isolate each shade or they can make them go up and down um, all at once. So it's one of those nice features that they can control their environment. You can see um, on the image on the right, those are the three um, clouds that are gonna be over the dispatch area. Um, so that's kind of where all the lighting and ventilation is going to be coming through. Otherwise, the ceiling is open. It's kind of got an industrial feel, but at the same time, we wanted to choose cool colors and a lot of warm woods and uh, other things to make it kind of um, serene, but also um, modern. Next slide, please. Here's some more images. There's the break room. We got our chairs and other office furniture all delivered um, this past week. Um, in the training room there, in the middle image, you can see the tables and chairs. Those tables are on casters and they actually fold up and can be stacked and that whole tabletop just flips up. And the chairs also, the seat flips up. So they're almost like walkers and they have wheels as well. So that room can be transformed pretty easily and converted into individual training tables. They can be turned into a, a long conference table. So it's good flexibility in the training room. And on the right, you can see an image of the chairs kind of stored and stacked there. Next slide, please. So we have a tentatively planned mid to late April. I'm talking to Roberto about trying to get a date for a ribbon cutting. There's been some interest um, from a number of groups. I'm sure y'all would like to attend as well. So we'll let everybody know when that's going to happen. And then we'll probably put together some kind of flyer and then send out to everybody so we can do a, a formal event and y'all can actually see the space. So. And there's the roundabout there. Any questions from anyone regarding the progress and the project? I, I just had a quick question on the training. How many people are going to be able to sit comfortably? Do you know? I believe there's about 40 chairs in there. Awesome. Thank you. Anybody, anybody have any questions? 
or sin in life. Doesn't look like it. So thank you very much. Thank you all. Appreciate it. <laughs> all right. And um, so we'll move to item 3B. 3B. Was that me? Good morning. Was that me? I'm muted. I believe it's, it's the IT presentation. Is that correct? Yeah, I apologize. Not a problem, not a problem. All right. Um, as you heard from Rod, there has been uh, a lot of significant uh, completion of the building, and we are currently prepping with our vendors to move into the building, as he mentioned, starting on April 4th. Um, if you can go to the next, the next slide, please. This is the high level uh, schedule that has the various sections uh, that describe our preparation and work to this point. As I reported last month, both the project initiation and planning phases have been completed and we have been working through the relocation prep. One change that has occurred has been the conclusion date um, from uh, the early part of April to April 30th. This has changed due to a um, change in schedule by one of Motorola's vendors for the installation of our micro microwave dish. And unfortunately, the third party vendor had some scheduling difficulty and has pushed that back to the third week in April. We are still working with Motorola and the vendor to see if we can make that occur sooner. However, this change in installation of the microwave dish will not impact uh, the move in any way, shape or form. Uh, as you can see, the relocation implementation and the closure, closure phases, for those of you with um, great memories, uh, has not changed from last month. And we will move forward to the next slide, please. All right, as I mentioned, both the project initiation phase and planning phase are complete. Um, I did not have an opportunity to update the information on the microwave dish in the presentation as we got information about it on um, Wednesday morning. Uh, the furniture installation for the 911 positions task is still at 99% complete. Um, I believe that actually has been completed uh, as of yesterday, but we have not gotten any update. Our, our normal um, status meetings are Tuesdays and Thursdays, but I will work with Rod to make sure that that has taken place. Next slide, please. Okay. Um, the virtual tunnel between the DPS and RACC has been completed. Uh, installation and testing of all new circuits is scheduled for uh, April the 3rd. That is the expected completion date of movement of all the equipment to the new facility. And those circuits will be tested uh, in earnest then. Uh, the completion of the electrical installation was moved to yesterday. But I believe that has been completed as uh, Rod indicated that the certificate of occupancy is expected any time now. Uh, the installation of the new MPLS router um, has been completed in the current RACC building. Unfortunately, we were unable to uh, work on that installation uh, last week due to some access issues to the new building. However, that will be completed uh, as of next Tuesday. And we expect no uh, issues as the installation in the existing building was fine. The relocation of uh, six of the 13 existing dispatch consoles is scheduled to begin on Monday. On Monday, there will be a meeting uh, from all of the technical our vendors, technical staffs, including C1, Motorola, uh, Lumen, that will include the county and the city as well. Uh, we have invited um, a, we have invited Larry Worstel and Galen Dobbs just to ensure that there are no concerns from the city's end on any technical issues um, with the relocation of IT equipment from the county. Uh, anything that is discovered then, we will ensure to include as part of the move. However, um, at this point, preliminary discussions suggest that it is not required um, at this time. Uh, next slide, please. 
As you can see, the plan for re, uh, relocation of the dis, dis, uh, excuse me, dispatch teams is expected to begin day one on February 3rd. Um, day two relocation activities are expected to be completed on February 4th. And post relocation activities are scheduled to be completed by, I'm sorry, I'm saying February, April 3rd, April 4th, and April 8th. Um, the teams, as I mentioned, will be working with the technical people from each of the vendors, as well as technical staff from the county. At this time, the dispatch team will be really relocated to Sandoval to uh, handle dispatch uh, requirements. And as of April 8th, we expect all activity to be relocated to the new building and functioning. Project closure activities include any um, uh, punch list items that we will take care of in the end, and we expect that to be completed on May the 8th. With that, are there any questions? I'm sorry, I always leave the slide in just to let everyone know who's still involved in, in the project. Any questions? All right, thank you very much. I appreciate the time to present. Thank you very much, Mr. Lawrence. Mr. Lawrence. Um, so now we'll move to item 3C, discussion of shot detection system, uh, director. I don't know about the other folks. I can't really hear Roberto. It's coming off like he's in a aquarium or something. Paul, am I the only one? Trying to switch mics right now. So. Cool. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yeah, John Lawrence says the same for him. If you asked if we could just hear you, the answer was ish. It sounds like you're in the matrix. Try this one again. That worked. Whoever that was. Is that better? Hey Roberto, since you're logged into WebEx through your desktop, can you try or your laptop? Can you try using it? Can you guys hear now? You want to just use this one? It's better. Sorry, Roberto. No problem. No. All right, can you hear me? Much better. Thank you. Thank you. So, in uh, regards to the shot spotter system, um, I met with Shot Spider and this also had a separate meeting with the engineer and of the PD um, to gather data. And when I met with Shot Spider, we determined 
I've determined that no dispatch center purchases that kind of uh, software. It's purchased through law enforcement agencies only. Um, I asked if there was a, any kind of um, uh, moments where they purchased like uh, between the city and the county together. That's also not something that Shot Spotter recommends or does. And it's something that the sheriff uh, will need to look into on his end, do and um, provide the data for shots fired, calls, and homicides, and then they can create a heat map showing them where the best areas to uh, put the shot spotter system would be and also provide a quote to the sheriff. But um, that's as far as I went after I determined that the system should be investigated by a law enforcement agency and not a dispatch center. That's all I have on that. Thank you, Director. Um, just to can you, can you hear me now, Manager Boy? Yep, you sound a little bit like a robot, but yeah, we can hear you. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, does anybody have any questions for Director Nuhan? No? Okay. Uh, one of the things I did want to bring up, I just got word yesterday, Director, that there was a rural crime, uh, rural and small department violent crime reduction program. So that's actually one of the things that we were going to look at in in the, this area for Edgewood, and, and it does allow us to partner. So uh, if the county is willing to do so, maybe we can get together and, and uh, see if we can put something together for, we wanted LPRs, license plate readers, along with shot detection. So maybe that's something we can pitch in the near future. All right, thank you. And then your next uh, item four. You want me to go? So I'm going to present the director's report for the month of February. Uh, total telephone calls handled by RACC incoming and outgoing 27,579. Total telephone calls handled via 911 6,376. Total calls via 98 only four for the month. Santa Fe County calls for service that were required dispatch was 4,507. City of Santa Fe calls for service that required dispatch 8,092. Town of Edgewood calls for service that required dispatch 500. We currently have 14 vacancies. Our trainees are doing great. Um, they're answering 911. A few of them are training in radios. Um, and they're going to go to the Law Enforcement Academy in May so to the PST uh, Academy. So we're looking forward to that. And that's all I have for my director's report this month. Can everybody hear me okay online? Not so much. Anybody have any questions for the director of the director report? I think you just asked us if we have questions about the director's report. I don't. That's correct. Thank you. Thank you. Move on to item five. Thank you. Okay, item five is in regards to the uh, budget for the ICC. There were some changes made. Um, this was emailed out. So, the general fund is at 107.812. Tax revenue at 4.4 million. Other revenue at 967.698 for a revenue total of 5.475. Uh, 
5510. And we have the staff total of three million five hundred and seventy eight thousand two hundred and six dollars. A contractual total at seven hundred and thirty thousand three hundred and forty eight. Travel total at fifty one thousand nine hundred. Maintenance total at two forty six four thirty five. The operation of supplies, other operating costs, and certifications, uniforms, and bonds at $107,084. Technology at $378,537. Living capital at $250,000. Uh, miscellaneous capital at $125,000. Capital's total $753,537. Expense total of $5,475,510. And here's the uh, some detail for you. So for the general fund, that includes our recurring revenue. It also includes uh, the Edgewood shortfall, and um, we're working with Chief Hewitt on that right now. The tax revenue is the estimated transfer from the communications and emergency communications and emergency medical uh, service gross receipts tax. The other revenue is based on the city, town, and county contributions towards capital and other reimbursable items. And this is what also supplements the uh, operational budget for the capital items, which is where the changes were made from the last presentation. Um, we got with our IT department, they recommended instead of refreshing uh, seven of the CAD CPUs that we refresh all of them at once so they all stay in the same um, maintenance life cycle. So that would be 13 total CAD CPUs that would be refreshed um, for equipment maintenance that increased due to. Uh, the underestimation of the maintenance and support services from UConn for the disaster recovery server, so that increased. And uh, one decrease was the contractual services uh, decreased by 32,400 due to mainline uh, uh, main support for the IBM server. And we're going to um, support the S400 in a different manner. So that's the changes in the budget. If anybody has any questions. Can you hear okay? Mr. Blair, can you hear me okay now? You sound a little bit like you're in the movie Tron, but I think we can make <laughs> what you're saying. <laughs> All right. okay. Thank you, Director Duhon. Do you have any questions for Director Duhon? Comments? Okay, um, so I, I will entertain a motion to approve. Okay, okay, so that's that's what we're presenting. Okay, okay, yeah, sorry, okay. Yeah. I have one question. Um, the rest of the MCIC terminals, yeah, but that's a request for just Thank you, Manager Schaefer. I'm sorry, I did, uh, oh, uh. That was an oversight in the part. The NCIC terminals are the CPUs uh, that we use to run subjects for warrants and uh, driver's license queries, enter stolen articles into National Crime Information Center. And uh, we are going to refresh, request and refresh three of those CPUs that have not been refreshed since 2021. It's for the central square. Oh, okay. yeah. So, so to address the central square past completion report, that's the, the item that's in, that was in question last meeting and this meeting as well. Um, I did send an email out uh, a couple of weeks ago to the board to review the task completion report and to decide if they were going to um, agree with people if they feel that the services have been fully implemented from central square. Uh, no time to decide on that. I did submit a letter to Central School asking for an explanation of services, an explanation of why the data migration has not occurred. Uh, and I have not received a response yet from them. Yeah. 
No, uh, Mr. Chair, um, Director Luhan, from speaking with our guys, I don't know if uh, Lieutenant McCord reached out to you or not, uh, but looking at the invoice on our end, it looks like the one thing that we haven't been using, uh, or if it's still maybe that they're still working on it on the Central Square side, is the barcoding. Okay. I believe the sheriff's office uses the barcoding, um, but I can get with the sheriff on that when, when I speak with him, but I'm pretty sure they do use barcoding. Okay, got it. Um, okay, so we will entertain in uh, action items on a motion to approve action item A. I'll entertain a motion. This is Greg Schaefer. Um, I'm going to move uh, to approve the proposed fiscal year 25 operating in the capital budget and uh, respectfully recommend. Um, that the uh, governing bodies of uh, the respective partners um, include you know, adequate resources to um, you know, fund uh, the requested contributions. Thank you, Manager Schaefer. Uh, do we have a second? Chief Black, second, and we will do a roll call. Is this on? Okay, um, Chief Black? Yes. Chief Moya? Manager Blair? Yes. Manager Schaefer? Yes. Member Wheeler? Yes. Chief Jimenez? Yes. Chief Joy? Yes. The motion has been approved. Great, thank you. Now we'll move to uh, action item. I'm sorry, uh, Manager Blair, you have a question, sir, or a comment? Yes, sir, thank you. Um, Team Santa Fe has not been able to gather uh, with our council yet. Uh, Mr. Marcos Martinez has been out of town on some personal leave. And so I wanted to see if we could postpone auction item 5B to the next meeting to give the city some time to discuss. Thank and I'd be you. happy to make a motion to do that if that moves that forward. Thank you, Manager Blair. Yeah, um, so it looks like Mr. Newham said that that would be good if we could do a motion, entertain a motion. Great. Right. I would make, I'd make that motion. Yes, sir. I'd make a motion to postpone action item 5B approval of Central Square Task Completion Report 2217 and related invoice number 393656 in the amount of $102,706.89 to the next regularly scheduled RECC meeting. Thank you. And do we have a second? Chief Moya, thank you. He second. And if we could get a roll call vote, please, ma'am. Yes. Uh, Chief Moya. Manager Blair? Yes. Manager Schaefer? Member Wheeler? Yes. Chief Jimenez? Yes. Chief Joy? Yes. Chief Black? The motion has been approved. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. I appreciate your cooperation on that and we'll be ready to go next time. And I also want to say, I'm sorry, I had intended to be down there with everybody because I heard Greg Schaefer is bringing breakfast burritos, um, but I got pulled into something. So I'm sorry I couldn't make it. Maybe next meeting manager. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so we'll move on to, unless anybody else has any comments or we will move on to action item 5C. Is that going to be you again, director? Looks like Mr. Nahum's going to take us. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chair, members of the board. Uh, before you for your review and approval uh, today is a, a resolution um, which is going to create a working group committee uh, to strategize and do an analysis of the hiring and retention of uh, dispatchers at the RECC. Uh, this has been a, a topic that I think the board is is aware of, that there are issues with training and then retention of RECC dispatchers. And it was discussed at the board at the last board meeting uh, that a working group committee uh, may be helpful uh, to strategize about uh, increasing retention 
you know, past the, what I think Roberto uh, referred to as about 18 months, which is the average retention for an RECC dispatcher. Uh, this resolution um, is required by the JPA. The JPA does allow the board to appoint uh, a working group committee by resolution. Um, and this resolution delegates authority to the board chair uh, to appoint those members uh, to the committee. And the board chair would then report back to the board uh, with an update as to uh, who was appointed um, and, and would give regular updates as to the work of that working group committee. Uh, I ask for your approval of this resolution. And R Roberto, do you have anything um, to add to, to that? But thank you. Thank you. I, yeah, I'd just like to say that um, obviously the RACC has improved immensely over the past couple of years, but there's always room to improve and uh, find alternate ways to retain staff and, and hopefully get fully staffed so that we can work on um, alternate schedules, shorter shifts, um, and more breaks for our staff. But also keep in mind that uh, federal engineering is doing an analysis of the RACC, and they will also provide recommendations in regards to staffing and other uh, recruiting and retention options that we have. So just I wanted to make sure everybody remembered that federal engineering is also conducting an analysis of the RACC as well. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you, uh, Mr. Nahum, director. Anybody have any questions, comments? Mr. Schaefer, I believe you're gearing up. Thank you, Manager Schaefer, uh, Mr. Vice Chair, members of the board. I think the intention is to have the board, uh, have the working group committee be composed of members of the community, anyone with expertise. It doesn't necessarily have to be board members. And I would recommend that, that not a quorum of the board uh, be appointed to the committee uh, so that uh, there is not a, a need for uh, open meetings, uh, compliance, things like that. Uh, and it would be up to the board chair to appoint those members. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Nahum. Anybody else have any other questions? This is Dr. Rosen. I would be willing to serve on the uh, committee. Thank you, Dr. Rosen. Uh, Chief Moya? Try, try that one. Uh, Mr. Chair, I hope they can hear me. I think my question is, are we going to send this out to the community like in a like a resolution kind of thing where we get people that want to be part of the committee too. So it's not just appointed, but like maybe, uh, I don't, I, I don't know if that'd be a good recommendation, but something that would let people, um, if they want to be part of it, let not just maybe we have a chief Mendoza can do a committee to, I don't know if that would be better than just appointing people, but maybe people that want to do it might be more vocal than we're forcing people to do it too. Yeah. Thank you, Chief Moyo. Do you want to respond to that, uh, Mr. Nahum? Thank you, Chief. Yeah, I think we can we can speak with uh, the chair and and come up with a good plan. I think that this resolution gives the chair pretty broad authority uh, to appoint members of the board in the best possible way. Um, certainly, having members that are interested to be on the board is better than forcing people to be on the board. And so that that would be a, a discussion we would have with the chair. Thank you, Mr. Nehu. Um, Mr. Sh Manager Schaefer. Uh, thank you, uh, Vice Chair. Um, it, the comments that I'm about to make I mean no disrespect to, to Sheriff Mendoza, but you know that's putting a lot of responsibility on one member of the board uh, to develop um, a working group committee. Um, and you know, I think if as this is to bring back recommendations to the full board. Um, I certainly wouldn't be opposed to having members of the working group um, at least ratified uh, by the full board so that there's buy-in from the front 
that we have an adequate representation of stakeholders. And again, in saying that, I mean no disrespect to Sheriff Mendoza. I just think that's a lot of pressure to put on one board member uh, to come up with a working group committee uh, when that working group is ultimately going to produce product, uh, you know, for the consideration and benefit of the entire board. So uh, that would be a comment that I would I would make. Thank you, Manager Schaefer. Anybody else? Or go ahead, Mr. Nehum. Uh, thank you, Manager Schaefer and members of the board. Um, I think we can amend the resolution, perhaps, uh, with a motion today to include a requirement that uh, that Sheriff Mendoza come back to the board with proposed members, perhaps, and have the full board vote on those recommendations uh, to to compose the the working group. Thank you, um, Mr. Chair. Maybe also include how many people are on the board. I don't know if we need to put a number in behind it, so it's not like thirty people. Like maybe put eight, but. Now it's just a. It's going to turn into a mess. We have forty people out there trying to make a recommendation. <laughs> so maybe we can add that as well. Thank you, Chief. Yes, I believe in any motion to approve this resolution. You can you can also move to uh, make those sorts of amendments. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? Okay, well, then I will entertain a motion. Um, anybody want to make a motion with the amended amendments? You can remember them. It's like Chief Moyo's. Uh, Mr. Chair, I, I'll make a motion to approve with amendments to add uh, Manager Schaefer's recommendation to uh, Maybe at the next board meeting in the next two months, we come with uh, people and we vote on the members in the next board meeting as well as a committee of eight, if everybody agrees, a committee of eight people. That would work for me. The only, the only thing I would say is maybe make it an odd number uh, just so we have somebody breaking the tie unless we have a, some, some sort of tiebreaker. Sure, let's make Joel. it seven. <laughs> Okay, we got a, a motion. I will second the motion. Chief Moya, thank you. You want to do a roll call, man? Of course. Uh, Manager Blair? Yes. Manager Schaefer? Yes. Member Wheeler? Yes. Chief Jimenez? Yes. Chief Joy? Yes. Chief Black? Chief Moya? The motion has been approved. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, now we will uh, move on to item six, which is public comment. You know, if we have anybody, anybody here in the audience or online that is wanting to public comment. Doesn't look like we have anybody here. Nobody online. Thank you. So then we will. Uh, Move to item number seven, concluding business. I will uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. Thank you, Manager Schaefer. Second. Chief Black, thank you. That's it. All right. Well, thank you all very much for uh, attending in person and virtually, and look forward to seeing you next month. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day. You too.